our master cylinder is out of the way and we're installing a brake booster. This is our booster. Essentially it's a vacuum chamber that connects to the engine's manifold vacuum and applies assistance when you brake. That way it's the pedal is not really, really stiff. It'll feel more like a modern vehicle would. These cars from the factory, they, they actually had to modify the firewalls from the factory for cars that got factory power boosters, which is what we're gonna have to do in order to install our booster. So the kit that we got from Lead Brakes actually comes with a template so we're going to have to make our hole bigger here for our push rod opening. So the dotted line is the uh, factory is the factory firewall hole and we're going to have to use our body saw and cut a little bit more out of there. And we're going to have to drill some holes like we have to drill a hole here and we have to drill a hole um, here because uh, from the factory I only have these holes. So we're gonna drill two holes. We're gonna we're gonna make uh, the push rod opening bigger. That way we can mount this up. So this is the not so fun part of this job, but that's what we gotta do. And uh, luckily enough, uh, the kit here from Lead Brakes gives us a little template. And so hopefully we can only, you know, do this real slick and easy. Okay, so we cut our template out here, and we just kind of installed it with you know the bolts that you know would install for your master cylinder and these two upper bolts are for your uh, pedal support so this gives us a pretty good idea of where we need to drill like we need to drill a hole here a hole here and you can kind of get a good idea of how much more you need to cut out of the firewall to accommodate the booster so essentially the template is just a you know a paper version of this so if you can you know get this to attach that might actually be pretty good as well but um we're gonna try the paper one out here and see how we do so uh, conveniently for this lower hole there's actually a little it's really hard to see on the film but there's like a little indent in the firewall so I think that's kind of like meant to be drilled out if the car, you know, from the factory got a got a brake booster. To cut out the firewall, we have a, a body saw here. Uh, you can pick these up at Harbor Freight. That's where I got this one. And um, we're going to try and cut out that hole. Okay, so we uh, cut that out, and then just to kind of make it smooth, we just I just took my Dremel tool, just like with a standard sanding disc, and just kind of went over it and kind of sanded it and smoothed it out the best I can. Like, it's really hard gonna, to make this perfect, and I'm sure there's some of you guys out there that are perfectionists, but, um, you know, this is about as perfect as I'm going to get for, for a hole that's going to get, you know, covered up by a brake booster. So, but uh, this way it doesn't have any sharp edges around it or anything like that. And uh, we'll do a test fit and kind of see how that booster fits in there. So, but we still got to drill our holes right here and right there. And then we'll be ready for a test fit. So the paper uh, template is really good for just kind of like tracing out your mark and then cutting that out with the body saw. Um, but as far as drilling the holes go, I think actually using the metal bracket that comes with the booster is going to be like a lot better, at least for 
just while I get my holes started. So I can actually just kind of set it up like this. And uh, that's going to get me really close and get in here with my drill. And then for this uh, second hole, there's actually a nice convenient little indent right down here. Okay, so seems how I have to drill through the uh, actual pedal support here. Um, what I did was I just kind of tightened these bolts here to kind of keep that support in its location keep it from moving around and then I can kind of drill it a little more safely I think so let's see how this goes okay and we're through so now we just need to make it a little bigger so to make it bigger we have a step bit I love using step bits. Um, the studs on the back of the power brake booster are a 5 16 so that's only one, two, three steps on the step bit. And that should work. You can always go a little bit bigger and have some wiggle room, but um, we're going to take the 5 16 and then go from there. So this plate goes on first, and the only bolt is up here in the very top corner, and then the studs go through the rest of the holes of the booster. Okay, so on this booster, just so you know, like it's gonna take some finesse to get this thing in there. Um, you're probably going to be pulling it in and out a couple times and test fitting it and making adjustments to your drilled holes and, and things like that. But um, this might be the hardest part of your whole conversion is getting your booster to fit on there and fit on there properly. So just to kind of make note like um, the only bolt that is in the outside is that one right there. And the booster has studs on the back side that go through the firewall. And, uh, not only do they go through the firewall, but they go through some of the uh, pedal support. So our original pedal support has these threaded nuts that are kind of installed in here. And the issue is it's very difficult to get that brake booster to pass through those um, without it being absolutely perfect. So um, as much as I hate doing it, I actually swapped out the pedal support for a aftermarket repop one. Um, that doesn't have those those threaded nuts that are attached to it. So that way the booster can just easily pass on through. There's the studs of the booster coming through, the new pedal support, and then the booster push rod aligns very nicely with the supplied pedal that came in this kit. Again, this is a lead brake kit. And the pedal feels nice and smooth. There's nothing binding on there. Um, and so we're gonna uh, put everything back together in here because I did just take it all apart to do the, the support again. Um, but anyways, that's part of the job. Um, 
the biggest thing is just keeping patience with this and then once we get this booster properly installed we can move forward to the master cylinder okay let's see if we can get this uh, brake switch installed let's not forget that Okay, so there's the push rod there for the master cylinder. Oh, I'm sorry, the push rod for the booster. Okay, and that's how your switch goes. Okay, and just so you know, like once you get your pedal all set up and attached and everything, um, there is an adjustment on this kit that I got. So this pedal feels like it's pretty high to me. So there is an adjuster. You gotta get clear back here. Um, but it's on the push rod of the booster. It's probably really hard to see. But um, we'll just have to take our our uh, push rod back off the pedal and loosen the lock nut, and we can kind of tighten it down a little bit. Thread thread the push rod in. There's a good look at it right there, and so that way it'll just kind of lower the pedal height of this thing because it does feel like it's pretty high. So um, the last thing that we're gonna do for this booster before we move on to our master cylinder is we gotta hook up our uh, vacuum line. So this thing is gonna get a direct manifold vacuum. This particular car happens to have a Edelbrock intake and there is a port right here that I can use. Um, so we're gonna take that plug out right there and install you can actually get these little uh, fittings from like AutoZone or O'Reilly the Spectra performance some of these might be antifreeze so you gotta watch out pretty sure that's a vacuum port Now you usually put some Teflon tape around there because you don't want any kind of vacuum leaks. And this does not have to be uh, super tight. It's just a, a nice little snug fitting. One way check valve. It's in a booster. The kit comes with a uh, hose to complete that connection it is really that simple and that's it that's all your booster needs